Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to welcome you to Asala's annual luncheon. For those of you who do not have the proper app on your so-called smartphone, <laughs> let, me let me tell you where you are in time and space. <clears throat> See, you don't have a history app, do you? So let me tell you where you are. You are at the 88th annual Black History Luncheon founded by Carter G. Woodson, the father of black history. This is the luncheon where ignorance gives way to knowledge, where falsehoods are exposed, where the truth, once crushed to earth, rises again. Now every year, reporters ask me, why Black History Month? They keep waiting for me to talk about ongoing racism. Black history is not primarily a function of racism. And certainly, it does not live on because of racism. I believe in history, and I know you believe in history, because you know our lives matter. We believe that our struggles and dreams that our failures and successes are an important part of human history. If racism were to dissipate today, we would not stop studying history. We would not stop studying our history. In fact, if racism died today, it would only mean that our history would rise unhindered by racism to the proper place it deserves in the movement of history. <laughs> Black history may have been born of racism, but it's here now, baby, and it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Black people indeed believe in history. In fact, we are the keepers of the American memory. We believe in history and American history because we are less modest than we sometimes appear. We are proud people because we know our history in this country matters. We know that if America was founded on an idea of liberty, we know it was no more than an idea to our struggles for, for freedom made it a reality. We know that if America is a country based on the idea that anyone can belong, we know that that myth only became a reality when we made it so. Our history is part and parcel of the American story, and when we struggled for civil rights, we know that we led the country in determining the path to civil rights, and we want you to know that civil rights is nothing that we're chasing behind to catch up with. We know that in our struggles, we make new rights. Yes. We make new rights. You see, the struggle for civil rights is an unfinished story. Civil rights don't come in a box all bounded, finished, and we just want in. Civil rights are expanded by our ability and our insistence on expanding those rights. We first had to fight for the right for public education in the South before we had to fight for the right for equal education in the South. There was no fair housing until we thought of the notion of fair housing. You ask any Jew, any Italian, was there such a thing called fair housing until we decided that we had to have fair housing. We make rights. We don't just ask for rights. We're not seeking other people's rights. Rights are not a circle. Rights are not like a car track in NASCAR. It's not a NASCAR track. Rights are those things that we have in civil society. And as we meet new challenges, we decide what rights we need. And we struggle and challenge the social, to change the social compact so that the rights that we have fit the rights that we need. This is what we mean when we say we are gathered here today to study civil rights in America because we know that just like our history is unending, the struggle for civil rights is an unending struggle. And that is why we are here today. Thank you.